deep in the desolate swamps of New Zealand's Northland, beneath 20 feet of suffocating clay and peat, something was waiting. It wasn't a fossil, it wasn't stone. When excavators struck it in 2019, the machinery didn't just hit an obstacle, it hit a miracle. They pulled from the mud a colossus, a cowrie tree, ancient and impossible. It measured eight feet in diameter and nearly 200 feet long. But the true shock wasn't its size, it was its condition. The swamp had sealed it in an oxygen-free tomb, preserving it with such terrified perfection that its bark was still attached. Its wood was as fresh as the day it fell. But this tree was not just a relic of biology. It was a black box recorder for the planet Earth. Hidden within its rings was a chemical signature dating back 42,000 years, a precise year-by-year -year account of a moment when our planet's greatest defense system failed, a moment when the sky turned against us and the Earth lay naked before the void. This is the story of the Adams event, and the warning it carried across four millennia is one we can no longer afford to ignore. To understand the terror recorded in the wood, you must first understand what keeps you alive. We walk through our lives protected by an invisible shield, the magnetosphere. Generated by the churning molten iron of Earth's outer core, this magnetic field extends thousands of miles into space. It deflects the solar wind, a stream of charged particles that would otherwise strip away our atmosphere and boil our oceans. But this shield is not static. It is volatile. Geological records tell us that the magnetic poles flip. North becomes south. South becomes north. Roughly every 200,000 to 300,000 years. We call these geomagnetic reversals. But before the flip happens, there is a transition, a collapse. For decades, scientists knew about a reversal 42,000 years ago called the La Chambre's excursion, but they lacked the timeline. They didn't know how fast it happened or how bad it got until they read the tree. As the cowrie grew, it absorbed carbon from the air. When the magnetic field weakens, cosmic rays flood the atmosphere, turning nitrogen into radioactive carbon-14. The tree drank this radiation. The rings revealed a nightmare scenario. During the transition, Earth's magnetic shield didn't just weaken, it practically vanished. It dropped to 6% of its strength. In some areas, it was zero. For 800 years, the gates were open and the cosmos flooded in. Scientists have named this period the Adams Event, and the world it created was nothing short of apocalyptic. With the shield down, the sun's radiation smashed into the atmosphere. The ozone layer, our secondary defense against ultraviolet light, was shredded. The chemistry of the air itself began to change. Weather patterns that had held stable for thousands of years detached from reality. The jet streams buckled. The tropics froze. The temperate zones burned. The tree rings show scars of intense drought followed by impossible floods. But the most terrifying change was the sky itself. Normally, auroras are confined to the poles. During the Adams event, the solar wind bombarded the entire globe. Imagine standing on the equator 42,000 years ago. You look up, and instead of stars, you see curtains of blood-red light rippling across the zenith. The atmosphere, highly ionized by cosmic rays, became electrically conductive. Lightning storms of unprecedented violence scoured the land. The world was electric, the air was radioactive, and everything living on the surface was in danger. For the megafauna, the giants of the Pleistocene, this was the end of the line. For years, paleontologists debated why the great beasts of Australia and the Northern Hemisphere vanished around this exact time. Was it human hunting? Disease? The tree provides the answer. It was a perfect storm.
The spike in UV radiation damaged plant DNA. Vegetation withered or changed chemically, becoming less nutritious. The food web collapsed at its foundation. Simultaneously, the climate swung wildly, habitats fragmented, the giant herbivores, mammoths, diprotodons, ground sloths, found themselves trapped in shrinking pockets of livable land. Weakened by starvation, sterile from radiation, and hunted by a new, clever predator, the giants didn't stand a chance. The magnetic collapse didn't just kill them, it erased the world they were built for. But what about us? Humans were there. We witnessed the sky catching fire. And unlike the mammoth, we survived. But we didn't survive by fighting. We survived by hiding. Archaeological records show a sudden global shift in human behavior exactly 42,000 years ago. Across Europe and Asia, early humans retreated deep into cave systems. They weren't just looking for warmth, they were shielding themselves from the ultraviolet radiation cooking the surface. This period coincides with an explosion of cave art, and specifically the use of red ochre. While often viewed as ritualistic, ochre is rich in iron oxide, an effective UV blocker. It was the world's first sunscreen. As the auroras blazed outside, our ancestors painted their hands on the walls of their shelters, perhaps a plea to the angry gods of the sky, or perhaps a record. We were here. We survived the light. The magnetic field eventually recovered. The auroras retreated to the poles. The cowrie tree fell into the swamp, taking its secret with it, waiting for us to find it. But the story doesn't end in the past, because Earth's magnetic field is failing again. Right now, a region known as the South Atlantic Anomaly is growing. It is a weak spot in our shield, expanding every year. Satellites passing through it already glitch due to radiation exposure. Since the 1800s, Earth's overall magnetic field strength has dropped by about 10%. The poles are moving faster than they have in recorded history. If an atoms event happened today, it wouldn't just mean sunburns and strange weather. It would mean the collapse of technological civilization. Our power grids, our GPS, our banking systems, the Internet, everything relies on delicate electronics. A shield collapse would let solar storms fry the transformers that power our world. No lights, no transport, no communication. We are 7 billion people dependent on a stability that the cowrie tree proves is an illusion. The excavation in Noafa unearthed more than just wood. It unearthed a perspective. For 42,000 years, this sentinel lay in the mud, holding the memory of a time when the Earth itself became hostile. It is a reminder that our planet is not a static stage, but a dynamic, violent beast that is merely sleeping. The shield protects us. For now. But the rings tell us that nothing lasts forever. The question isn't if the sky will turn against us again. The question is, will we be ready when it does?